Closed captioning is brought to you by Verizon Communications, your guide through the wilds of communication. And by the Yawkey Foundation. Boston, the New England Sports Network presents exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball. Tonight, it's the Red Sox taking on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Greetings, everyone. I'm Bob Kurtz. Welcome to the ballpark. Well, finally, finally, the Red Sox are back home here at Fenway Park. After that long trip out west, back to Fenway and back again. They went 8-8 eight and eight in the 16 games. Things will get a little easier for them coming up. They've got a three-game series coming up here against Tampa. Also, a three-game trip to Tampa Bay later this month. This is the Red Sox schedule between now and the 1st of September. Six games against the Devil Rays, four against the Texas Rangers, three tossed in against Bull Vaughn and the Anaheim Angels, and a four-game trip to Kansas City. I'm joined now, as always, by Jerry Remy, and also a roster change for the Sox as they come home. A little bit of a surprise, Bob. You walked into the Red Sox clubhouse today, and Lou Maloney was sitting in a locker. And, of course, Maloney this year played in Japan, was let out of that contract, signed again by the Red Sox, and was doing very well down in Pawtucket. And, of course, the Red Sox, uh, since John Valentin had gone down, has had some problems at third base. Sadler, Veras, Fry, Alexander, Sprague, Barry, they've all had a chance at it. And recently, Ed Sprague has been playing much better over there. He's been hitting the ball better, and he's played excellent defense since he's been here. But tonight, Lou Maloney gets back in the lineup over at third base. Uh, it's nice to see Lou back. I'm sure Nomar Garcia Parra is very happy, one of his closest friends. And Lou actually did a very nice job here the last couple of years as a utility player. But he'll be the starting third baseman tonight against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Yeah, nice to be back here at Fenway. Nice to have Pedro Martinez on the mound for the Red Sox tonight. Pedro Martinez matched up against Dave Island. Back with the rest of the starting lineups right after this. Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of be freedom By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. By Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas. Mobile Speed Pass, it's free and it's only in Mobile. And by Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you, the three most important words are, Hey, Beer Man! Overcast and cool at Beacon Hill this afternoon, early evening, a little bit of a fog in the air, a little mist here at Fenway Park tonight, but we've got baseball for you. The Red Sox are finally back home in New England. They'll be here for a while. They'll open up a 10-game homestand tonight and a three-game series here, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Lou Merloni, the newest member of the Red Sox. Merloni added to the roster today, as Jerry told you, in our open, is the Alcantara being sidelined for the next 15 days. He's on the DL, and Jimmy Williams wasting no time. Jerry getting Lou in the lineup. He's starting tonight at third base. Well, Lou had returned to Pawtucket and was playing some pretty good baseball. As a matter of fact, hitting over 400 in just a few games down there for the Port Sox after returning uh, from Japan. So uh, he's got some at-bats under his belt and uh, right in there at third base tonight for the Red Sox. and got a nice ovation from the crowd when he was introduced in the starting lineup. Framingham's own Lou Merloni leading the Red Sox onto the field here tonight. Sox taking on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Larry Rothschild, the manager of the Devil Rays. His starting lineup goes like this tonight. Gerald Williams will lead off. He will play center field. Miguel Cairo follows at second base. Greg Vaughn hits third. Fred McGriff cleanup. Jose Guillen out in right field has a 10-game hitting streak that he'll bring into Fenway for the series. Steve Cox is the left fielder. Old friend John Flaherty behind the plate. Aubrey Huff at third base. And the veteran Ozzy Guillen at shortstop. He will bat ninth. Red Sox are fourth in the league defensively. They made 73 errors in their 113 games. It'll be Lou Maloney at third base. Nomar Garcia far of the shortstop. Mike Lansing at second and Brian Daubach at first. Left to right, Darren Lewis giving Troy O'Leary a night off. Carl Everett in center and Trot Nixon in right. Jason Veritek caught all those games down in the heat of Texas. Back in the lineup tonight. And on the mound, right hand to Pedro Martinez. Pedro had the four-game winning streak stopped last time out against Anaheim. They lost that ball game two to one, but 
Once again, Pedro was outstanding. Eight innings in that ball game. Only the two in runs, no walks, and nine strikeouts. Working tonight against a Tampa Bay club that he is two and two lifetime against with a loss this year. You might remember earlier Steve Traxel shutting out the Red Sox. Pedro lost it one nothing, but had 17 strikeouts in that game against the Devil Rays. That was back on May the 6th. Matter of fact, Pedro has lost his last two starts against the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Tonight's starting pitcher for Tampa Bay, Dave Island, beat Pedro last year on a Tropicana Field 3-2. Our umpires tonight, Gary Cedarstrom calls the balls and strikes for us behind the plate. Dale Scott will work at first base. Rob Drake at second. Marvin Hudson will be the third base umpire. Sullivan Tire keys to the game. Uh, two straight complete games by Pedro. Maybe three tonight. Who knows? Devil Rays, a 265 team average. That's the lowest in the American League. But the Devil Rays have played pretty good baseball since May the 31st, the second best record in the American League. So now here comes Tampa Bay, which, uh, what, 35-31 since the 31st of May? Only the Yankees among Eastern Division teams have a better record in that span as this one rifled foul by Gerald Williams. Williams, the leadoff hitter for the Devil Rays, 286, 18 homers on the year, and he's got 77 runs batted in. He hit his 18th home run yesterday to help beat the White Sox. 18 home runs representing a career high for Williams, who fouls it at the plate. Quickly down to Pedro. No balls, two strikes. Well, Pedro right away with the changeup after Williams was out ahead of his first fastball. Pedro right back with the changeup and had Williams way out in front. Crowd sensing the first strikeout of the night. Fastball just off the outside edge, one and two. 13 wins, four losses for Pedro. Sparkling 1.46 ERA. Still a ball and two strikes. Another large crowd expected here at Fenway to welcome the Red Sox back. Sox have got the Devil Rays, the Rangers, and Anaheim coming in on this homestand. Played before a long string of sellout crowds here at Fenway this summer. Here's the one two from Pedro Martinez swing and a miss. He struck him out. Pedro goes back to the changeup to pick up the first strike out of the night. Williams kind of set the tone in that at bat when he was out in front on the fastball on the very first pitch there. That means Pedro's got change speeds on him and got him on the changeup. 205 now on the year for Pedro. A healthy margin over Cologne and Mike Musina chasing him. Miguel Cairo looks at a called strike. 68 for Cairo. No homers, 28 runs batted in for the Devil Ray second baseman. Martinez, one ball and two strikes. Cairo, generally a guy that puts the bat on the ball. He's only struck out 27 times this season. Zinn is a pretty good Fenway hitter. He has something like a 350 lifetime average in his ballpark, but uh, facing Pedro here at Fenway tonight. Here's the one two pitch. Breaking ball missing away. Pedro had a four-game winning streak until he lost his last start 2-1 against the Angels. Here's the 2-2 now to Cairo. Makes contact, fouls it down the third base line. Two balls and two strikes. Cairo protects the plate and fouls it back. 
Cairo has been a much better hitter this year for the double raise away from Tropicana Field. He's got a 317 batting average on the road. He's hit just 212 at home this year on the artificial turf. Pedro deals 2 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Two strikeouts for Pedro. Well, we mentioned a big, big strikeout uh, time last time he faced him with 17 and a quick start tonight with two. He got Williams with the changeup. He gets Cairo with the curveball. Pedro well rested. He got a chance to fly home early yesterday uh, instead of making that uh, late night flight with the Red Sox. Pedro coming in yesterday ahead of the ball club has the full night's rest. Goes to work here against Greg Vaughn. Vaughn takes one down and away. One ball, no strikes. 285 for Vaughn. 22 home runs on the year to go with 53 runs batted in. Pedro misses up high. 2-0. Martinez nine strikeouts his last outing at Atlanta. He had seven the start before that at Seattle. Last big strikeout game for Pedro was 15 against the White Sox back on July 23rd. Pedro struck out 15 or more in a blow game nine times in his career. Now there's a case where Vaughn is confident he's going to get the fastball on the 2-0 count. Didn't get it. Got the changeup. Again, the example of Pedro throwing any pitch at any time. Strike two. That's the ball from Gary Cedarstrom, the plate umpire. Two two to Vaughn up high full count. Now cheering Pedro here on every pitch in the first inning they sense a strike out of the side. He's gotten Williams and Cairo already has gone three two here on Greg Vaughn. Three, they go at the top of the first. Pedro strikes him out. Cool, cloudy night at Fenway Park. Pedro Martinez mowing down the side there in the top half of the first inning. Red Sox come to bat here against the Devil Rays. Jimmy Williams lineup tonight features Trot Nixon leading off in right field. Nixon with seven hits in his last 15 at bats. He's in the leadoff slot. Jason Veritek will follow behind the plate. Carl Everett bats third. He plays center field. Nomar Garcia Parra will hit cleanup. That is Brian Daubach at first base. Bloom Berloni starts tonight at third. Scott Hatterberg the DH. Mike Lansing at second base. And Darren Lewis gets the call in left field. Tampa Bay Devil Rays the ninth in defense. 82 errors in 116 games on the season. Aubrey Huff will be at third base. Ozzie Guillen, the shortstop, Miguel Cairo at second, and Fred McGriff at first. Left to right, Steve Cox, Gerald Williams, and Jose Guillen. Guillen's got an outstanding throwing arm. John Flaherty behind the plate, who had the game-winning home run yesterday for the Devil Rays. And on the mound, making his second appearance since coming off the DL, is Dave Ireland. He was on the DL with a pinch bursa sack in his left hip. That didn't sound too comfortable. No. And last time out, pitched pretty well against Minnesota. Six innings, only two earned runs. He did not get the decision, but the Double Rays won that ball game 5-4. to 0-1 this year against the Red Sox. Mentioned he did beat Pedro last year 3-2 in a ball game down at Tropicana Field. So Island goes to work here for Tampa Bay. They've seen Trot Nixon, Jason Veritek, and Carl Everett here in the Boston first inning. The four-year-old Dave Island, a Florida native, began his career in the Yankee organization. 
First pitch to Trot Nixon is a called strike. Nixon checks in with a 292 average, has eight homers, and has knocked in 45 runs. One ball and one strike. The count on the Red Sox right fielder. Nixon tonight making his 10th start from the leadoff spot has a 333 batting average when leading off. Takes a strike. It's one and two. Nixon got an at bat in the ball game last night down in Arlington in a pinch hitting roll in the ninth inning and rounded out. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball, curveball, slide a change up from Ireland. Big guy, 6'3, 208 pounder. First pitch in the majors with New York has been a long time minor league pitcher. Ground ball here by Nixon to second base. Bob will buy Cairo, won't recover, and Nixon will reach to open the game for Boston. Now the young Cairo, generally a pretty good second baseman, but he'll pick up his ninth error of the season on this uh, fairly routine ground ball by Nixon. A couple of steps to his right. They take it off the chest and uh, no play at first base. Not sure it was the chest, but it was somewhere in that vicinity. In any event, Nixon reaches to open the inning. Jason Veritek in the number two hole for Jimmy Williams. Tech takes a called strike. 263, 851, his numbers this year. Long season for Larry Rothschild, although the Devil Rays have uh, come back recently. They got off to a horrible start. Remember, they stockpiled all those sluggers during the offseason. We haven't seen much of Tampa Bay, Jerry. They haven't been here since the first weekend in May. Now well, they've had a lot of injuries too, Bob. Uh, Vinny Castillo, the third baseman, has been on a DL a few times. Greg Vaughn has had some physical problems. Uh, of course, Canseco was on a DL for a long time. He now with the Yankees. Charge to right field. Guillen going back on the warning track will make the catch. Hustling back to first base is Trot Nixon. Hit very well by Veritek. Seemed to die in this uh, heavy air out on the warning track. Guillen makes the catch. There's one out. Yeah, misty, foggy, uh, everything here tonight at Fenway Park. Ball hit pretty well. The breaking ball by Veritek, but to the big part of the ballpark. 380 down to that bullpen area, and right on the warning track is Jose and Guillen third, to make the catch. Two, the center fielder, Carl Everett. Your eye on Guillen tonight. He has a terrific arm out in right field. Well, we saw that a few springs ago with the Pittsburgh Pirates when he was a member of that organization. Bounced around, but uh, has a terrific throwing arm. Here's Carl Everett, the center fielder. 305, 29 home runs, 89, 81 runs. Batted in. Everett takes a called strike. Everett had a couple of long home runs. Knocked in five runs Friday night down in Arlington. Did the Sox the win in the first game of that series with the Rangers. Boston taking two or three games from Texas. Nothing overpowering from Ireland. His fastball so far tonight has topped out about 85-86. That last pitch, the changeup. Games that we've seen him, Bob, against the Red Sox, uh, he's been pretty good at spotting that ball around, mixing, uh, changing speeds, keeping hitters off balance. Looking Everett away, but missed. One ball and two strikes. That one first got to the big leagues with the Yankees in uh, 1988. Brief time with New York in a variety of seasons, also with San Diego. 
for settling into the Devil Rays organization. Foul back by Everett. Still a ball and two strikes. Island comes into tonight with just 12 wins in his major league career and 36 decisions on the big league level. Getting a one and one mark with Tampa Bay this year. Everett drives this one right down the left field line foul. Slicing foul off the bat of a left-handed hitting Everett. One, two, still the count. Ron Nixon and the Red Sox really haven't had time to settle in at home. The Red Sox landed at Logan a little bit after uh, 4 o'clock this morning. Well, they got back a little earlier than maybe they thought they would. Still trying to shake off the effects of the long road trip. But they'll be at Fenway now for the next uh, week and a half or so. No time to settle in, enjoy the home cooking again, get the laundry done, get back into their routine. Everett loops it out to left field. Scooting over to make the catch is Steve Cox. And again, Nixon, who opened the game safe on the air by the second baseman, has to retreat back to first base. Rouds here in the Boston first. Here's Nomar Garcia Parra. The 84 average leads the American League. Elton of uh, Colorado has a 392 mark to face the National Leaguers. Makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. No runs, no hits. The air by the second baseman, Cairo. Red Sox can't cash in. They're scoreless after one. Maggot Fenway, no score after one. Let's take a look at the home run leaders, brought to you by New England Ford dealers. Frank Thomas on top with 35. Troy Glass, Tony Batista, and Carlos Delgado all tied with 34. National League... Leader is Gary Sheffield with 37, Sammy Sosa 36, Griffey and Bonds tied at 34, and Jeff Bagwell of Houston with 33. Pedro Martinez has struck out the side 15 times this season, the latest of which, of course, last inning. When he mowed the double raise down, 1 2 3, Williams, Cairo, and Vaughn. Williams, Cairo swinging, Vaughn looking in the Tampa Bay first. Fred McGriff. Starts out swinging here in the Tampa Bay second. Numbers for McGriff, 276, 20 home runs, 84 runs batted in. He now has had 20 or more home runs in 13 seasons in his major league career. And has hit better than 400 out of the yard in his career. Closing his career in uh, his hometown of Tampa Bay. But quickly down here to Pedro Martinez, nothing in two. Fred McGriff, an all-star this year, all-star representative from the Devil Rays. Is it not at bat, and they were four changeups. Did not see a fastball, did not see a curveball. Change up after change up, and he gets him to chase that one down away. He's got four strikeouts, three of them on change ups, one on curveball.
Jose Guillen. Takes one wide, one ball and no strikes. Guillen, like Pedro, a native of the Dominican Republic. 74, eight homers, 35 runs batted in. Jose comes into this game with a 10 game hitting streak. First double ray to make contact. And thrown out though by Jason Veritek. Veritek uh, made a tough play. Made a tough play. Look actually easier than it was. Yeah, that's a nice play by Veritek because there was a lot of spin on that ball. It's a curveball that's tapped out in front of home plate. You almost expected Pedro to make the play, but instead Veritek will make it. And the grass a little bit slippery because of the drizzle Number falling here at Fenway, but he's able to make the play and retire the end. So he scoops that ball with the hand into the glove and then makes the throw. Nice play by Veritek. Two outs in the second inning for the Devil Rays. He Cox, the left fielder, takes a called strike. 76, seven homers, 23 runs batted in. The Devil Ray rookie. Pounds him inside with the fastball. Two and one the count. And now three balls and one strike. Cox, a native Californian, drafted by the Devil Rays off the Oakland A's roster in the expansion draft. Hits it hard. Base hit center field. Double Rays get their first base runner of the night. Five game hitting streak now for Cox and that's after uh, an extended slump that he was in prior to the last five games. Finally got him a hit as count and a good fastball. Three and one fastball and right back up the middle for the base hit. Double Rays get a base runner with two outs here in the second. Brings up the Tampa catcher John Flaherty. 84 with seven homers and 28 runs batted in. Flaherty had the game winning home run for Tampa Bay yesterday. Three run homer in the ninth inning off Chicago's Bobby Howry. On the 12th pitch of a long at bat to give the Devil Rays a walk off win against the White Sox. seen much of Tampa as I mentioned earlier Jerry with the Sox are going to see a lot of them here the last two months of the season three game visit here and then the uh, Sox will visit Larry Rothschild's uh, home ballpark towards the end of the month and then again right at the end of the season Sox have two trips to Tampa about four weeks apart. They'll have ten games left with the Devil Rays this season. Clarity is four for four in his career of Pedro. I would put him right about the top of the list of the toughest hitters that Pedro faces. I can't imagine anybody else. Unless I get the wrong numbers, I'm going to double check that. Four for 11. <laughs> well, still has four hits, but <laughs> it's taken a longer. It's a breaking ball there for a strike, two and two. See, I made an 11 on my thing here. Uh, and it ended up looking like a four. Well, I know, but you're tired. No, no, I feel good, Bob. <laughs> Got a good night's rest. Swing and a miss. Flaherty down on strikes. Pedro has five strikeouts through two innings in mound duty. Still scoreless here at Fenway.
Back at Fenway, no score as we move to the bottom of the second inning. Well, Red Sox fans, ESPN will be televising the Sunday, August 20th game against the Texas Rangers. The game will begin at 8.05. Gates will open at approximately 6.30. Not really a time change on that. I guess there were two things listed, one at 1 o'clock and yeah, then uh, 8 o'clock in case ESPN picked it up. So it'll be the 8 o'clock start when the big ESPN people come in. Yeah, they the thought game. it was going to be an 8 o'clock game originally, but they had the one in the 8 o'clock times listed. ESPN uh, picked up their option. They got the ball game, and it'll start at 8.05 here Sunday night against the Texas Rangers. Out of ESPN Sunday night baseball, Sox and Rangers, the game of the week. When I think of and ESPN, I think of... Peter Gammon and Mark Quinzel. The first base. And Nelson Brad. That's right. That's right. Big wig over there at ESPN now. Tommy McNeely is as well in their hockey department. Two Nelson graduates on the ESPN roster. Here's Brian Daubach. The lead off for the Red Sox here in the second. Brian Daubach, Lou Merloni, Scott Hatterberg. Uh, getting the call from Jimmy Williams at first base tonight. One ball, no strikes on Daubach. He has been struggling a little bit at the plate as a number of Red Sox have recently. Daubach opened four in the game last night. Has now just five hits in his last 43 trips. Sox got enough offense in one inning last night, though, to beat the Rangers. They got four runs in third, two runs single by, with two outs by Nomar Garcia Parra. Jason Baratek also had a two out single later that inning. That was all the Sox needed. And Mohoka picking up the win, going five and two thirds. Rich Garcia is doing a great job in relief. How about sending this one down in the left field corner foul? Garcia and low out of the bullpen for the Red Sox last night. much room to go foul but it did and on the carom young man has a souvenir never give up on it there's the four for four you were talking about uh, Dwabach against Island no I'm not gonna know <laughs> <laughs> how did your own pillow feel last night even though it was what about 5 5 30 this morning I don't know Dwabach about the same spot down the left field line, a little further over into the crowd. This time it's coughed up by the faithful here at Fenway under the grass in left field. Two balls and two strikes. Lou Merloni from Framingham waiting his turn in the on deck circle, his return to Fenway Park. Back to chewing the metal. Somebody used to do that in his days at Providence College. Daubach to straightaway center field. Earl Williams started back, then moves in a couple of steps, makes the catch, one out. Chance of Lou, Lou Merloni here at Fenway Park. Numbers at Pawtucket for Maloney this year, a 410 average with one home run and his return to the Red Sox organization from Japan. the first pitch ground ball base hit center field and the Red Sox have their first hit tonight yeah, it's been a long trek for Maloney going from uh, the Red Sox and then over to Japan and didn't play a whole lot uh, over in Japan finally he got out of that deal and back to Pawtucket couldn't wait to swing at the first pitch here at Fenway and picks up the base hit 
Hope he made some yen over there in Japan with the Yokohama Bay Stars. That's who he was with. Sox get a runner at first with one out here in the second. Scott Hatterberg, the designated hitter. Fifty-two for Scott with seven homers, twenty-eight runs batted in. Edinburgh had the night off last night with the left-hander Kenny Rogers going for the Rangers. Breaking ball from Island for a strike, one and one. A little bit of a struggle recently for Hatterberg, two for his last 21. Last ball away, two and one the count. Sox won two or three games from the Tampa Bay Devil Rays on their first visit here to. Fenway Park this year. Two and two. Red Sox, you remember, had all kinds of problems against Tampa last year. They lost nine of the 13 games. Sox won 94 games. We're in the playoffs for the second straight year last year, but the one team that uh, handled them better than any other was the Devil Rays. up with the baseball right in the middle of all the fans down there. Still two and two. Griff holds with Lou Merloni at first base. And the count goes full, three and two. Keep our eye on Maloney over at first. Ireland, not generally a strikeout pitcher, his strikeout high for this season is three. For that reason, they may send Maloney on the three-two uh, count. And there goes Lou, three-two pitch is line fouled by Hannibal. with a 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed. Down on strikes goes Hattenberg. And a stolen base for Lou Merloni. Foul tip by Hattenberg right into the glove of uh, Flaherty. And of course, that makes it a little bit more difficult for him to try to get that throw off to second base. It's up there right in the webbing of the glove. He can get the grip on it. And Maloney gets the second base on the strikeout. Flaherty this year at 27% as far as throwing out runners. Sox get Merloni in scoring position with two outs here in the second. Leaves it up to Mike Lansing, the second baseman. Breaking ball to Lansing for a strike. Lansing had an 11 game hitting streak snapped by the Rangers over the weekend down in Arlington. He has been the everyday starter at second base for the Red Sox in the absence of Jose Offerman, who is getting set to come off a disabled list. There was some talk that maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Sox would have to make another roster move. Chopped 
to third. Aubrey Huff is there for the Devil Rays and throws out Mike Lansing to end the Boston second. No runs, one hit, and one left. Scoreless ball game after two here at Fenway. Completed Fenway, no score. Devil Rays and Red Sox. Let's take a look at the Applebee's American League ERA leaders. Pedro 1.46. Albi Lopez of Tampa Bay. He's been pitching very well. 3.51. Rick Helling, who we just saw down in Texas. Roger Clemens, since coming off of the Sable list, has been brilliant for the Yankees. And Paul Abbott of Seattle at 3.80. Roger winning again for the Yankees last night in Anaheim against the Angels. Yankees maintain their four-game lead over the Red Sox in the East. Aubrey Huff will lead off here for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays against Pedro Martinez in the third, 367. In brief minor league time for Huff, couple of homers and seven runs batted in. One ball, one strike. Called up when Vinny Castillo went on in the Sable list back on August 1st. Second round pick a couple of years ago for the Devil Rays. Looks at the high hard one there for Martinez. Two balls and a strike. Makes contact. Lansing will have to hurry. Huff coming down the line pretty good out of the left-hand side of the batter's box as well. And Lansing able to throw him out. One out here in the third. Well, if we got news for you, it's ESPN News that is coming up following the game here on Nesson. Scoreboard watching is really heating up around baseball, and they'll have the latest on the entire playoff chase, plus more news from the NFL as the fallout continues around the league from the weekend's preseason action. It's ESPN News, and it's next here on Nesson. What fallout, Bob? Must have been the Cowboys' uh, one-point loss you were talking about last night. Yeah. It's fallout around the league. Huh? Must have been some problems around football I'm unaware of. Ozzie Guillen. Long time. Uh, nemesis of the Red Sox. Used to be with the White Sox for all those years with that old beat-up batting helmet, which you can see has made its way from the south side of Chicago through Atlanta, where he was last year, to Tampa Bay. Been a new paint job, but it's still pretty... Uh, it's seen better days. New Tampa Bay logo on it. Rips Pedro Martinez for a base hit here to center field. Two hits now for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays tonight. Ozzy's not usually up there very long. Uh, it's uh, generally uh, one, two, maybe three pitches tops. But uh, again, does not walk much, does not strike out much. And here he takes uh, the fastball and lines it up the middle for the base hit. Number four, the center fielder. Gerald Williams. Back to the top of the order, Gerald Williams. Will open the game tonight by striking out against Pedro Martinez, who has five strikeouts to this point of the ball game. Eighteen leadoff home runs, uh, home runs I should say from the leadoff spot. The only guy with more as a leadoff hitter is Darren Erstad of Anaheim. He's got 19. Runner goes and a base hit to right field. Rounding third is Ozzy Guillen. He heads to third, first and third here for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Guillen hit it right in the spot, vacated by Lansing. Nice job there by Gerald Williams. Uh, play a little hit and run. He's got the wide open hole at second base. And gets on top of a high fastball with Lansing covering the bag. So they have a little first and third. And I'm surprised you don't see more teams try it against Number Pedro one. when they get base runners. Uh, try to put men in motion. I think what scares a lot of managers away is there's a lot of non-contact against Pedro. Good job there by Gerald Williams. They work to perfection. The hit and run, first and third now with one out. 
Miguel Cairo. And wide open stance on the right side as Martinez instead goes to first base to keep Gerald Williams close. Seven steals for Williams, but he has been thrown out eight times. down the third base line. Cairo, like Williams before him, a strikeout victim back in the first. three-run homer for Miguel Cairo and the double raise lead Pedro and the Red Sox three nothing a mistake with the changeup home run number one on the season for Cairo you'll see the location of the pitch from Pedro is to change up but it stays up and in and uh, Cairo will find the screen in left field to give the double raise the three nothing lead the designated hitter. The most unlikely of uh, players to hit the home run, only his first. Iro goes deep, and the Devil Rays have an instant three runs. This Cairo's ninth major league home run. Greg Vaughn follows. Vaughn used to hit that many in a week. His fly ball here to center field, gathered in by Carl Everett, and there's one out. Or two outs, rather, here in the third inning. Number 29, the first baseman, Fred McGriff. Two outs in the visiting third. Here's Fred McGriff. down swinging his first trip in the second inning. McGriff line drive base hit left field soft liner that falls in front of Darren Lewis. Last time it was four straight change ups to McGriff this time he starts him with the curveball and Fred hits the base hit to the opposite field. Double Rays Number have five 30. hits now tonight off Pedro right Martinez fielder. four of them coming Jose here in the third yeah. inning. Don't see that very often do you four hits in an inning. Devil Rays trying to become the first club in the American League to defeat Pedro in three straight starts against that particular club. It happened only once in Pedro's career in the National League. That was against the Mets. From about mid-97 to mid-98, he made three straight starts against New York and lost all three of them. Benson Pedro lost to Tampa Bay last year 3-2. Down at Tropicana Field, was beaten by Traxel here, 1-0 at Fenway back on May 6th of this year. And comes in and plunks Guillen. And Guillen right on the side. Pedro has now hit 13 batters. That leads the American League in that category. The next closest to him would be Jeff Weaver of Detroit. He's got 10. Esteban Yan here of Tampa Bay also has 10. Number 28, the left fielder. Some of the Steve mud out of the cleats. Cox. Facing the left fielder, Steve Cox. Cox takes the strike. Cox had the double raise first hit. He was their first base runner, a two-out single to center back in the second inning. Griff at second base here. Guillen is at first with two outs in the third. Three in on the home run by Cairo. Cox 
lays off one ball two strikes. Now it's obvious that Pedro probably doesn't feel that real good fastball in the early going because there's been an awful lot of change ups and curveballs. Swing and a miss. Cox goes down and Pedro has six. But the Devil Rays have three. They got three runs on the scoreboard thanks to the three run homer by Miguel Cairo. And it's three nothing Tampa Bay after two and a half. You are watching Sox in two. The rebroadcast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson. We now rejoin the action later in the game. Three nothing Red Sox uh, trail the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. We move to the bottom of the six. Well, fans, uh, this season the Red Sox are offering free shuttle bus service from Ruggles Station to Fenway Park for all Red Sox games. The Red Sox want to improve public transportation access for fans arriving at games via the Orange Line, commuter rail lines from Attleboro, Franklin, and Needham, and several MBTA bus lines. For more information, please visit RedSox.com. Jason Tyner has gone in to play left field. Tyner is the new left fielder for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. They've made a couple of defensive changes. Tyner into play left, and Russ Johnson goes to third. <laughs> defensive change early here for Larry Rothschild. Red Sox batting here, now bottom of the sixth inning. Red Sox. Number two, the center fielder, Carl Everett. Carl Everett to lead off of the Sox here in the sixth inning against Dave Island. Carl Everett, Nomar Garcia Parra, Brian Daubach. The meat of the order, hitters three, four, and five. Looks at a called strike. Everett has flied to left and doubled to the gap. And actually, that to the gap, he hit it off the wall. A scraper on the way down over the head of the left fielder at the time, Steve Cox, as Rod Beck warms in the bullpen for the Sox. Chardo having already worked two innings. We'll probably see Beck in the seventh. hasn't gone according to the script of the Red Sox. You figure you come back home, have Pedro going. Usually go late into the ball game. Get a win over the double Rays, rest the bullpen. That script has not worked for Jimmy Williams tonight. It's kind of strange when you look at the Red Sox record here at Fenway. 28 and 25 on the season here at home. Just three games over a break even. Pretty much the same record for the Sox this year, whether they've been at Fenway or on the road. Round ball here, base hit right field. It's a between Cairo and McGriff. Everett has his second hit. Everett in the hit is count three and one. He did get the fastball from uh, Dave Ireland, and he'll put in that hole between first and second. So now Everett two for three, the double, the single. And Garcia Parra coming into the plate, and that'll get some activity going on that bullpen for the Devil Rays. Mr. Banyan, it looks like the right-hander. They only have one left-hander, Doug Creek, so I bet that's him, Jerry. Excellent, Bob. It's amazing. The preparation is just incredible. Meanwhile, Nomar Garcia Parra bats here for the Red Sox. Takes it down low. Everett goes, pitches a strike to throw down. Not in time, skips into center field. Everett will go to third. Here comes the throw. Everett with a head first slide is in. 
Holding base for Everett. We'll see who the air is on. Allowing Carl to move to third. Well, down by uh, three runs. The Red Sox are not standing still. They had Lewis running last inning, and now they have Everett on the move. He'll pick up the uh, steal on the head for a slide. The ball gets by Cairo, and one more base again with the head for a slide for Everett. And he's going to get some attention from uh, Jim Rowe, the trainer. It looks like he gets some dirt or mud in his eye from those head for a slides. Error charge to John Flaherty on the throw. As trainer Rowe works on Carl Everett. Strong throw by Flaherty, but it looked like it deflected right off of Everett as he slid in. Makes the tour of the bases and winds up at third base. Action intensifies in the bullpen for the double Rays. Omar takes one up and in. Two balls, one strike. into left field. Center fielder finally drops the ball. Gerald Williams drops it, and Garcia Parra is safe at second base. Looked like the left fielder, Tyler, was going to handle it, and then all of a sudden it was Williams, and he dropped the ball. Everett scores. Garcia Parra winds up at second. It's 3-1. to one. Did you see how much that ball got taken by the wind back toward the center field? That looked like a routine fly ball or left. And then it just started to carry back toward the center fielder. And right there, Gerald Williams can't hold on to the baseball. He didn't expect to have to make this catch. Never had control of it. Pops out of the glove. And the Red Sox catch a break there. That ball bump started out as a routine fly ball to Jason Tynan out there in left field. And then the wind just got a hold of it took it back to Gerald Williams, and he was the last guy to expect to have to make a play on that. And imagine if he scored a sacrifice fly for Garcia Parr, give him an RBI. And give uh, center fielder Williams an error on the play. Sox are on the board, trailing by two now, 3-1, and they've got Nomar at second base, and still nobody out here in the sixth. Those crazy nights here at Fenway where the ball really moved after getting caught up in that wind. We've learned that the wind is back overhead. That's the flag we check. Look out at the flagpole in center field. Sometimes it's straight out, and sometimes it just sort of hangs there. It's hanging there right now, but there's much more of a breeze than that here at Fenway Park. This one's stuck, too. <laughs> That's a strike on the outside corner. It's two and one. It's two and two. Good location on those last two pitches for Island. After a breaking ball right on that outside corner. Larry Cedarstrom handling the balls and strikes tonight. Ripped. Base hit. Towards the corner in right field. Garcia Parra being waved home by Wendell Kim. It's a 3-2 to two ball game. A two-base hit and an RBI for Brian Daubach. After a couple of pitches away from Daubach, he tried to sneak one inside, and Daubach was ready for it. The line drive up over the head of McGriff. 
No fan interference as it heads down in the corner by the time the end chases it down. Red Sox have their second run as Nomar scores and Dorbach standing at second base. Another big base hit for Brian Dorbach. Sox are within a run. And they've chased Dave Island from the mound. Knocked him out here in the sixth inning without retiring a batter. Does leave with the lead, but responsible for Dorbach at second base. Verizon Wireless call to the bullpen. Esteban Yan making his way in. We'll take a break here at Fenway. Back with more baseball right after that. Back here at Fenway, 3-2 lead for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Well, wake up with Nesson Sports Desk tomorrow morning, and you get a complete update in just 15 minutes. Get the final word on tonight's Red Sox game, including highlights and post-game reaction. Plus, we'll have all the other action around baseball as it relates to the playoff chase. All that, plus every score, every major headline, and every key highlight. Tune in tomorrow to Nesson Sports Desk from 5 to 9 a.m. Dave Island done for the night, working five plus innings. Leaving with the one run lead, and Esteban Yan is first up for Tampa Bay out of the pen. He's been in the starting rotation most of the year, but they made a couple of deals. Rick White, Jim Masur traded out of that bullpen uh, right at the end of July, and they move Yan back into the bullpen. You see the hits allowed. He has allowed a lot of home runs, 25 home runs on the season. And uh, the last couple of appearances, he's been very well out of the bullpen. Dying run, Daubach at second base. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning. Lou Merloni at the plate. Lou squares to bunt. Drops it right out in front of the plate. Handled there by Flaherty. He will throw out Merloni. Sacrifice 2-4. Moving to third is Daubach. Nice job by Merloni as he'll drop it right out in front of home plate. Gets out to that grass area, and that's where Flaherty will have to field it and get Lou at first base, but he moves that runner up to third with only the one out. Now the Devil Rays pull the infield in. Scott Hatterberg is the hitter. Hatterberg tonight has struck out and grounded in the second base. On waste the fastball wide. Baltimore all over the White Sox tonight. White Sox problems continue at Camden Yards. Now Rogers showed you the highlights. Yankees with the early lead down at Texas. Big battle tonight in the Bay Area. Fox have scored two. They've got the tying run. Daubach at third with one out. Hatterberg chasing that one from Jan. One and two the count. On a ground ball pitch there. Uh, looked like uh, the split fingered fastball from Jan. No contact by Hatterberg. Fly ball, center field. Darrell Williams is there. Makes the catch. Tagging at third is Brian Daubach. Throw will be up the line. Hatterberg does the job and ties the game. Now, Hatterberg's the kind of guy you like to see on base there with that infield in because he has that uppercut swing, and generally, 
will get the ball in the air. This time he gets it in the air deep enough. Now that pitch is pretty good. That ball's down, but Hatterberg still able to drive it to center field in the air to get the run home. You know, Bob, you got a credit effort with a lot of this. He got on base, and instead of standing still, he took off, stole second, got the third, really started to get things going in this inning for the Red Sox. So far, it's paid off in three runs, a tie game. Mike Lansing, Red Sox second baseman, takes one inside. One ball, no strikes. Sox have tied it up, 3-3, here in the sixth. Chopper on that wet infield down the third baseline. Russ Johnson, the new third baseman in there for the double raise. Two strikes. Still one and two, the count on Lansing, who's rounded to third and lined right tonight. He's 0 for two. Double Rays got all three of their runs. Well, Pedro Martinez back in the third inning on the home run by Cairo. Red Sox have tied it with three here in the sixth. Lansing fouls off another pitch. 90 mile an hour fastball from Esteban Yan, still one and two. Missed at the knees. Count is even. Two balls, two strikes. Lansing <laughs> went down, chopped it foul down the third baseline. Joined us late. Pedro Martinez had to leave after uh, four innings tonight with a stiff shoulder. Hope is nothing more serious than that. Replaced by Hippolito Pichardo and Rod Beck probably will take over in the seventh for the Red Sox. Series continues here tomorrow night. Jeff Passero, Tanyan Sturtz out of Worcester, Mass. The pitching matchup. Orlando Arrojo and Ryan Roop will work the series finale on Wednesday. the first baseman McGriff into right field for a base hit. There have been two errors by the double Rays this inning. Throwing error charged to Flaherty when his throw hit Everett sliding into second base. And of course Williams, the center fielder, dropped one on a fly ball from Garcia Parra. And this will be an error on Fred McGriff. He throws back on the ball and you can see it just go right underneath the glove. Really didn't get down on it at all. And McGriff picks up the error. That is his eighth of the season. A sloppy inning here for the... Uh, Devil Rays. The error inning for Larry Rothschild's club. Number nine hitter for the Red Sox, Darren Lewis. the two out base runner for the Sox. Hot shot, base hit, right center field. Lansing stops at second. And now we'll move to third. Is losing his footing out there was Jose Guillen. 
Yeah, they're losing the footing and scooting to third base on the play to take advantage of it is Lansing. He had stopped at second base. Well, I'll tell you what, Guillen saved the run. He made a heck of a play out here because he's going to slip on the wet grass, but still able to knock the ball down. This ball hit hard by Lewis on the line. And if it gets by him, it's probably going to go all the way to the bullpen. Look at this. Slips, but still able to knock the ball down and keep it in front of him. That rolls by him. Lansing, of course, would score in the play. Yeah, probably score easily. Bill Fisher, the pitching coach for the Devil Rays, going out to talk to his pitcher. Larry Rothschild on the phone to the Devil Ray bullpen. Esteban Yan should be sitting in the dugout, but uh, instead he sees action warming up over his shoulder out in the pen. Going to get the left-hander, Doug Creek, up and warming for the second time tonight. Nixon, the hitter for Boston. Base hit here would give the Red Sox the lead. Wild pitch here would give the Red Sox the lead. Four errors charged to Tampa Bay tonight. Three of them here in the sixth inning. Iro had one back in the first. Nixon not able to hold up the swing, two and one. Well, the good thing is they've made some mistakes, and the Red Sox have been able to take advantage of it. at third base. Darren Lewis over at first. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Nixon. Nixon high fly ball. Left field. Jason Tyler is there. Tyler battling the wind and the mist. Makes the catch and that'll retire the side. Sox uh, scramble back. They tie up the ball game. Leave two aboard. It's 3-3 as we head into the late innings tonight from Fenway Park. Tuesday on Front Row with the mad angler himself, Charlie Moore. He'll take us to the beautiful Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire for the $10,000 Big Bass Competition. It's the largest one-day tournament in New England, so don't miss the action. Grab your seat in the Front Row Tuesday, beginning at 5. Nesson drops you a line every Wednesday afternoon with four great outdoor shows. At 3, fish the waters of America with Americana Outdoors. At 3.30, Jim Baugh and friends take you on an open water outdoor adventure. Then grab a buddy and descend with divers down as Mark Stanton exposes you to beautiful underwater views from around the world. At 4.30, back home as Northeast Outdoors scans the New England coastline for hot fishing action. Make a splash with Nesson every Wednesday from 3 to 5. Back here at Fenway Park, brand new ball game. Sox get three in the bottom of the sixth. It's a three-three ball game. We check the mobile speed pass. Stolen base leaders Johnny Damon, Delano De Shields, Robbie Alomar. Now joined by Ricky Henderson of Seattle. Hey, a new name, Bob. That's nice. You seven steals for Ricky Henderson, moving up on the leaders uh, over the age of 40. Luis Castillo, Tom Goodwin, Eric Young remain the three names in the National League. Boy, nice to see a change in that, isn't it? Henderson. 
uh, what, a second team this year. Here's Rod Beck, the third pitcher, to work for the Red Sox tonight. Last time he worked was against the Rangers a couple of days ago, two-thirds of an inning in that ball game. Beck's uh, done very well since uh, coming off the disabled list. This will be his eighth appearance since coming off the DL. He's worked a total of nine and a third innings, given up a couple of earned runs in that span. Tampa Bay charged with four errors tonight. Second time this year that an opponent has made four errors in a game against the Sox. Oakland did so April 15th here at Fenway Park and then wound up being a 14 to 2 win for the Red Sox. Rarely can you commit that many errors and win the ball game. Now batting for Tampa Bay. The Sox 13, have come back to tie it up 3-3 three, three, and Ozzie Guillen leads off here in the seventh. Tell that to the White Sox and the A's right down the bottom of the league in defense but yet the White Sox lead the division and the A's uh, shooting for the wild card. Both have been struggling a little bit recently. A's have cooled considerably since the Red Sox saw them out in Oakland. And the White Sox, as you mentioned, Jerry, got that big uh, lead around the All-Star break and they're stumbling a little bit right now. And pounded tonight in Baltimore. Ozzie Guillen has a single to center. Ozzie Guillen is grounded to second. Guillen, the shortstop of the White Sox for so many years. Moved on to uh, Atlanta, and now on to Tampa Bay. Shoots it on the ground. Dawbach stays right with it. Ball hugged the infield ground, and Dawbach makes the play, and there's one gone. Jimmy Williams was talking about uh, how good Dawbach's been playing defense at first base. He says, uh, and I still take him out of the games late in the game and put Bronier in there, but he has played a very nice first base. He takes extra bases away there from Isaac Guillen. And the pick earlier back in the fourth inning to Gerald save the Red Sox Williams. the run. And Garcia Parra made the nice play on Gerald Williams, who's coming up now. Williams has a hit in his middle at bat. One for three. Back with a breaking ball for a strike. One to one. Everybody's happy down there. Dad's got a beer and the kids got a souvenir. Back with the one two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Earl Williams goes down on strikes. Let's go to our Nesson Studios and uh, see how Gabe Kapler and his hitting streak are making out down in Texas. Bob Rogers. All right, Bob, you gave it away. Well. Gabe Kapler wastes no time tonight. His first at bat, second inning, right back up the middle against Andy Pettit. And yup, he extends his hitting streak to 27 straight games now. The Yankees, though, still lead the game 2 0. No, we didn't give that away. We said we'll see how his hitting streak is coming out. And set Bob up, and Kapler came through with the base hit. That was the big baseball story down in Texas, about the only thing the Rangers had to talk about when the. Red Sox were down there yeah. over the weekend. <laughs> we, we had a chance to hear Johnny Oakes' post-game comments last night. That was it, right? That was amazing. Red Sox won the ball game. Rangers lost two of the three games. And, I mean, Johnny's going on for, I mean, it's five, six minutes about the hitting streak. <laughs> Talking about what kind of pitch he hit and, uh, you know, how he's hanging in there and blah, 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 blah. 
We thought Johnny might be trying to take just a little bit of focus off of right. what else went on that night. One ball, two strikes here on Miguel Cairo. there for Beck. Beck just mowed him down. One, two, three. Seventh inning stretch here at Fenway. Tied at three. You are watching Sox in two. The rebroadcast of Monday's Red Sox game here on Nesson. We now rejoin the action later in the game. <laughs> Nesson's exclusive coverage of Boston Red Sox baseball has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines is symbol to be freedom. By Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. By Mobile, introducing the fastest way to get gas. Mobile Speed Pass is free and it's only in Mobile. By Miller Lite, for the coolest stuff in the world, go to MillerGetTheGoods.com. And by Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Signs that'll take you to some of the great attractions here in Boston and here at Fenway Park tonight, a 3 3 ball game as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Some defensive changes for the Sox. Rico Baronia in to play first. And then as a pinch runner, you recall for Brian Daubach, stays in the game defensively. Derek Lowe takes over on the mound. Rod Beck working two innings following a two inning stint from Mipolito Pichardo and a four inning start from Pedro Martinez. So Lowe on for the 52nd time this year. Got the save. In the ball game last night is 26th of the year. 26 saves, 31 opportunities. Comes into this one into a tie game. Facing bottom third of the order, John Flaherty, Jason Tyner, and uh, Ozzy Guillen are the three scheduled hitters. Number six, the catcher, John Flaherty. Flaherty leads off, has a couple of homers in his last four ball games, including the game winner yesterday in the ninth inning against the White Sox. It's the breaking ball from Lowe. It's the fastball, but that misses. One ball, one strike. Look at that mist reappearing here at Fenway Park here in the top of the ninth inning. Wind kicking up a little bit more. Oh, gets the call from Gary Cedarstrom. Two balls, two strikes. Taylor and Roberto Hernandez in the bullpen. Hernandez in the foreground, and Billy Taylor, veteran A's and Mets pitcher. A little chopper here by Flaherty, fouled down the third base line. A couple of uh, closes. Uh, Hernandez, obviously, for the Devil Rays, and Taylor at one point in his career was a closer with the Oakland Athletics. to open the top of the ninth. 12 strikeouts for Red Sox pitchers tonight. And they piled them up. Pedro started it, and then Pachado uh, continued it along with Beck, and now Lowe picking up the strikeout on the curveball of John Flaherty. Jason Tyner. This time we've seen Jason Tyner at the plate tonight. First round pick of the Mets back in 98. He was traded here from the Mets for Rick White and Bubba Trammell. Right at uh, the, the trading deadline. 
good speed. He had 33 steals uh, for the Mets AAA ball club and actually appeared in 13 games for the Mets. The big league Mets. After spending most of the year with Norfolk. Now Red Sox in the bottom half of the inning will be sending up Aaron Lewis and then Trot Nixon and Jason Baratek. Strike pitch here to Tyner. Tyner rounds it left side. Will Merloni will make the play. Tyner makes it a close play at first base, but he's out. Sure did, and you can see why he had those 33 steals down at the minor league level. He got down that line in a hurry. <laughs> kind of a running start, too, on that type of swing. Maloney cutting in front of Nomar, and uh, the double clutch almost cost him at first base. Very close play. Number 13, the shortstop, Ozzie Gideon. Two outs, top of the ninth, Ozzie Gideon. Double raise three in the third, Red Sox three in the sixth. A tie game here, top of the ninth inning. Saberhagen tonight threw a game for Trenton. He worked three innings in the game, allowing a hit. Got Laverne runs, a walk, and three strikeouts in that ball game. The only hit was a two-run home run in the first inning with nobody out. Some place where they were going to let him throw, maybe 75, 80 pitches, so only three innings tonight. Garcia Parra has it go off the glove and short, and reaching with two outs here in the ninth inning is Ozzie Guillen. And probably going to go as a base hit to Guillen. I don't believe there would have been a play for Nomar at first base. You have to charge the ball because uh, Guillen still gets down that line pretty decent. And Nomar trying to make the uh, play with the quick hands can't do so, and a base runner with two Number outs. Four, As Scoggins the scores with a base hit. Gerald Williams. It is like to see that green light go up. The end gets his second hit of the night. Obviously, will hold with the runner at first base. Gerald Williams, top of the order here for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Has a hit in four trips tonight. With the infield hit by Guillen. Tampa Bay now in double figures. They've got ten hits tonight. Away, one ball, one strike. Outfield playing Williams straight away. Chopper here down the third baseline on the wet infield. The throw from Merloni will sail into the dugout. Stopping at third base on the play will be Ozzie Guillen. Base error charge to Merloni. You can have a look at it here. Tell you what, Bob, with the two outs, it might be a good break that the ball ended up in the dugout because if it rattles around out there, the run's probably going to score. This ball just takes off from Maloney and into the Red Sox dugout. If it had hit that camera position and rattled around, 
that run probably would have been able to score. Number one. Scored a hit, an infield hit, and then a throwing error for Merloni. Cairo had the home run to give Tampa Bay the lead initially back in the third inning, batting here with runners in second and third and two outs in the top of the ninth. It'll be heads up, too. You never know. Cairo might try to drop a bunt down. These guys worry a little bit uh, with those men in scoring position because they generally put the bat on the ball. Even though he's punched out a couple of times tonight, that's not his history. And, of course, he does have that big three-run home run back in the third inning. His first this year. Oh, quickly got the first two hitters here in the ninth, but now the Devil Rays threatening 2-0 pitch. Cairo, ground ball to Garcia Parra. Nomar will make the throw to Bronia, and that's it for the Devil Rays. They leave a pair stranded in scoring position here in the top of the ninth. The Red Sox with a chance for the walk-off win in the bottom half of the inning. Taylor takes over on the mound here for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays as the game goes to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Taylor called up on August 1st from AAA Durham, the second the time he's been with the Devil Rays this year. Also up for a brief stint back in May. Went to spring training this year with the Colorado Rockies, released at the end of March, signed by Tampa Bay shortly after that. A guy that's got 14 pro seasons with a lot of minor league games under his belt. Finally got to the majors in 1994 with Oakland after 14 seasons in the minor leagues. Finds himself back in the minors, a good share of this 2000 campaign. Now in the big leagues. With the double Rays working here to Darren Lewis, who will lead off the bottom of the ninth inning for the Red Sox. Hit by a pitch. Red Sox have their leadoff man aboard. Taylor, one of those guys that throws down from the side, three-quarter delivery. The ball runs in on right-handers, and he'll get to Darren Lewis right off the back of the arm. The Red Sox get the leadoff man on. Top of the order for Boston here and Trot Nixon, who has one for four, has reached a couple of times, reached on the error by Cairo back in the first inning. Charging in McGriff from third, or from first base rather, Russ Johnson charging down the line from third. Lewis, far and away, the leader on the Red Sox with eight sacrifices on the year. That's Lewis right now. The man they're trying to sacrifice in the scoring position. Lewis goes. Here comes the throw. Lewis swipes second. Well, what's going on tonight? Two stolen bases for the Red Sox. Runs their season total to 30. Lewis tried to run early in the game when they were down by three. Everett ran when they were down by three. And now, just a straight-out steal. And Lewis gets in a scoring position with nobody out. Red Sox take advantage of that slow delivery to home played by Billy Taylor. Now we'll see if they keep the bunt on with Nixon. Try to move in the third or let Nixon swing away, but pull the ball. He's going to take it off. He'll take it off now, two and one. <laughs> oh, 
Up high to trot. Three balls, one strike. Taylor digging at the mound. Nixon takes a strike. It's three and two. Nixon looking for something middle end. Instead, it was uh, away. Nixon hits it in the air to right field. Scooting back is Guillen. Way back goes Guillen. Guillen will make the catch on the warning track. Tagging at second base and moving over to third will be Darren Lewis. Nixon almost won the ball game there with a big swing. In the process, though, does advance the potential winning run. Darren Lewis to third base with one out. Yeah, that's the thing. If you got to let him swing away, he's got to pull the ball in that situation. And certainly Nixon made a bid for a home run. He got the breaking ball right back to the warning track, but gets the job done. Makes the out, but gets Lewis to third with less than two. Well, now with the man at third base, infield in, they're going to pull the outfield in. And obviously, they're not going to walk Veritek and Everett because that would get him to Gassiopara. One ball, no strikes. Harold Everett waiting his turn in the on-deck circle. See if Veritek can win it for the Red Sox right here. Veritek lifts it in the air down the left field line foul. Evens the count at one and one. <laughs> Billy Taylor, third pitcher used by the Devil Rays tonight. Aaron Lewis at third base, one out here, bottom of the ninth inning. Veritek swings and misses. It is one and two. Taylor, of course, could really use the big strikeout. And with two outs, the Devil Rays could drop the infield and outfield back. Veritek strikes out. Taylor gets the big strikeout. Two gone here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, this will be interesting now. Uh, we'll see if they pitch to Everett or whether they want Everett and Garcia Parra, which would take him down to Rico Bronia, who came on for Dorbach. Mary Rothschild, the manager there of the Devil Rays, talking with the veteran relief pitcher Taylor. And we'll see what they cook up. Number two, the center fielder, Carl Everett. Carl Everett has had a major impact in this ball game tonight. They're going to walk both of them. Now, the only danger that provides is obviously if you walk wrong, you know, the game's over by loading the bases, but uh, they're, gonna, they're not going to take the chance of pitching to either one of the two guys, and they're going to make Rico Bonia beat him with a base hit. Our 
Gerald Everett is walked. He takes the free ticket to first base. Similar fate awaiting Nomar Garcia Parra. Hopes here in the ninth inning tonight. We'll ride on Rico Bronia. Two more pitches due here to Garcia Parra. Right a spot here for the New England kid who wanted to play for the hometown team. Bronia returning to Boston. Returning to New England and a chance to win it for the Red Sox here. Struggled at the plate this year, both with the Phillies and with the Red Sox since coming over to the American League. Everybody standing here at Fenway. One ball, no strikes. That's the one danger that uh, Jerry pointed out. No place to put Bronya. Bronya fouls it back. It's one and one. First to bat for Bronya tonight came in as a pinch runner for Brian Daubach in the eighth inning. Bronia has just uh, three hits, including one doubled and 16 at bats so far with the Red Sox since the trade, or since being claimed on waivers. two pitch and it's outside two and two the count
Rico Bronya getting all sorts of pats on the back. Sox needed only one run. Bronya gets him four. Big hug there from Trot Nixon. Red Sox have started the home stand with a big come from behind. Seven to three win here over the Tampa Devil Rays tonight. Standing ovation for Rico Bronya. This big sellout crowd of better than 32,000 continues to celebrate here at Fenway Park. Two new members of the Red Sox, Mike Lansing and Rico Bronya. One more time, the game-winning Grand Slam home run by Rico Bronya. And it's a walk-away win for the Red Sox. Rico, we're watching the home run. That, okay. one, that one really had to feel very oh, sweet coming home to New England. It did. It's unbelievable. I uh, I can't describe the feeling right now. It's uh, you know, it's more than a dream come true. Rico, you These sit. Fans are great. You're sitting in the dugout. You know that uh, once Veritek was out, they were going to walk yeah. Everett. You knew they were going to walk Nomar. You knew the game was going to belong to you. Right. And it looked like the first breaking ball you got is the boy hit for the home run. Yeah, and he threw a backdoor slider to trot, and I knew uh, I knew he might try it because at three and two he'd probably go back to the fastball because he didn't want to walk me. So I figured that might be the time he'd throw it. Beginning for the Red Sox, Darren Lewis got it started. Uh, he got hit by the pitch, and then he moved to second on the stolen base. Trot was able to get him over to third, and Rico, you only needed one run, but you gave him four. Well, I was just trying to get a base hit, and maybe that's why I hit the ball pretty good. Uh, wasn't trying to do too much, just trying to make contact, especially with two strikes. Hey, Rico, you're very familiar with this area. I just want to remind you, they're not, they're not cheering right now.